Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're moving outdoors so that I can answer a viewer's question that comes up, well, more than I would think that it would come up, and uh, let's give them an answer. So the viewers are asking, how do I put line onto a conventional reel that does not have the traditional level line feature like this one does? It's kind of understood that this is going to guide the line when you do a, uh, a lining because, uh, well, that's the purpose of it, right? Self or level winding reel. But if you have a reel that doesn't have that line guide, how do you get that nice line lay and how do you do that uh, consistently so that uh, you, you can maximize the use of your reel and your spool. Well, that's the subject of today's video. We're going to talk about a couple of things, interestingly enough, and it's not just going to be about uh, how, do you, how do you spool that on. First thing we're going to talk about is the line itself. So if you're looking at a reel, there's a, the reel's basically going to tell you line capacity. So for example, on this one, it's going to say it's got 580 yards of 14 pound test. 290 yards of 25 pound test. Well, that's not just good information to know. That's generally because that's how the reel has been engineered. It's telling you to use lines between, well, 14 and 25 pounds in this particular example. And that's because of the way that the drags are set up, the max drag in the reel and the type of fish that you would be pursuing uh, when you're fishing. So. One of the things that I find constantly amazing is somebody will take a reel like this and they'll put on very light freshwater line, let's say eight pound test. And yeah, you load 600 pounds in there, but you're probably not maximizing what this reel was used for. So you are either got a very heavy freshwater reel or you got an under uh, underutilized or, or the wrong setup if you're taking this one out in the ocean because that eight pound line is gonna snap more times than it isn't. Now braid changes things a little bit, but for the most part, look at the recommendation from the manufacturer on the line weight, and then you know what kind of size line to buy. So in this case, if it's 25 pounds, you can buy a 300 yard spool and that should fill the spool. When we're talking about filling spools, you want to leave the line short of the ridge. In this case, this is a Shimano reel. It's a a Mark III uh, Triton Mag, notice the red line on that spool. That's about where you should stop when you are lining a reel. It's similar to this. Don't overload. Leave it maybe a, an eighth of an inch proud of the end of the spool. Don't jam it right up to the end of the spool. All that normally does is uh, cause you to uh, have issues with the um, line getting trapped inside the spool. Let's look at the spool now. We're talking about a conventional reel. What you want to do when you're lining and taking off the spool is to put a rod through there. We'll do this in a moment. Put a rod through there, or a screwdriver, or a pencil, depending on what size spool you have. This is a 15, uh, 100 yard line, so it's a bigger spool, for example. And this is a 30 pound test. You want to look at which way your spool is turning. In this case, it's turning in a clockwise manner. So you want, when you line up your, uh, the line, you want it coming off the same way as it's wound on that spool. I got a call from a viewer not that long ago that says, when I let my line out, it's constantly um, kinking and rolling over and uh, looks like wind knots and the like. Well, if you reverse the way that the line is coming on that spool, in other words, you take it off on the bottom, and then you put it onto a line that's going in a clockwise manner, you're basically creating figure eights. Monofilament has memory, and uh, it doesn't give it up. You can see right here, there's a lot of twirls here. If you put it the same way that it's going, that's when you're going to eliminate a lot of those issues. So. We're going to just go ahead and take my rod. You can probably see out in the distance, I have a milk crate. I'm going to put the rod through the milk crate and the spool. We'll get ready to line this up.
So the first thing you want to do is maximize your line and you want to bring it through every eyelet on the pole. Now I'm using a uh, Penn Long Beach pole here. You're going to notice that it's got the small eyelets. You do not want to use the big eyelets of a spinning pole for your conventional reels. These are designed, sometimes they're called boat rods, but these are designed for those reels that are used with the open or conventional uh, style. Next thing you want to do is you want to connect the line to your reel with an arbor knot. So first thing you want to do is just a simple overhand knot. Now again, this is in, I didn't bring all my tools out. You probably would want to clip that end. And once you've come through all of those uh, line guides, your arbor knot is going to go under the arbor. The arbor is the center spoke of this. And then come back up. I hope this is kind of showing okay on camera. You have a loop. Bring your tag end through the loop and then come across and through another loop that gets created by that. I'm trying to do this for the camera. I've got muscle memory, but I don't have... Uh, there we go. What you've done essentially is you've created a simple slip knot. You can see it there. It's a simple slip knot. Pull them both tight and then pull it tight to the spool. That's not going anywhere now. Notice there's a little tag on there. I did not tie it off on that tag that comes on the reel. That's fine for trapping it, but uh, the arbor knot is to me is a lot stronger in terms of holding and uh, you don't have to worry about they're all getting pinched on the end. Not that you're ever going to take this reel down to the point where you're going to uh, need that last uh, little bit of effort there uh, to land the fish. All right, let's put this on. Okay, I've attached the reel to the rod. I forgot that I had the tie down clamp on, which I had to stop the video for. When we go to spool the one without the line guide, we want to mimic what that line guide is doing. Going to the right, coming all the way back to the left, going to the right. And how do you do that when you don't have a line guide? You do it with your finger. Let's see if we can kind of set ourselves up here to show you. You're going to hold it tight, and then as the line turns, you're going to guide the line back and forth, one side to the other, simply moving it, and just filling in the spaces. You don't have to be exact with it, but you do want to cover it back and forth. Do that enough times, 300 yards worth, this line will be filled. Now you can't see off in the distance, maybe, maybe you can see off in the distance. That spool is doing nicely all by itself. You don't need any tension on that spool, but you should put tension when you're cranking it on this side. So let's just review what we've done then while we're doing this. So the first thing we did was we made sure that we had the right pole. This is a pole with small eyes for this particular reel. And then we made sure we had the right line for the reel. Remember, we said take a look at what the recommendations are right on the reel. And if it's not on the reel, go to your spec section of the, of the line and uh, you'll see uh, the capacities. That's what you want. And then what we did was we used an arbor knot after we lined through the pole. We used an arbor knot to tie that down. And once we tied that down, we started to crank and we're using our thumb on both sides to guide it so that we have a nice even spool as we come through the pack. We also told you do not overline the reel. That's an issue. And that's uh, in this one it's guided by that little red line on the side of the spool. But that's kind of the idea of how you do it. And my hand is getting tired, my voice is a little sore, but if that if you're interested in how do you line the reel? You wanted to do a couple of things. You want to know how to tie the line on the reel, to use the appropriate line, to use the appropriate pole, and to use your thumb in lieu of that line guide. Well, I hope you found that interesting. 
Uh, it's an answer to a viewer's question. It's an answer to a lot of viewers' questions, surprisingly. Uh, there's a lot of viewers out there that have inherited a reel like this and have never used one. And that's first up and foremost in uh, the questions that they have. Another one that comes up all the time is the question of braid slip. Because a lot of these reels do not come with a tag or do not come braid ready. And uh, what happens is braid is very slippery. And if you just tie braid onto a solid, shiny, nice, smooth arbor it, without using a monofilament backing, well, that braid is going to slip. And it's going to give the appearance of failed drag washers. I just had two reels come into my shop with that exact condition. The fellow uh, loaded up on braid, never backed it up, and told me that he had reels with bad drags. Well, they weren't bad drags at all. It was braid slip. So make sure if you are loading braid to a reel like this that you do use monofilament for the first 10 or 15 yards before you load the braid. Well, again, I hope that that's been uh, educational and enjoyable for you. I hope that's showed you how to line the reel, how to use your thumb to guide it, how to use the right line for the reel itself, and how to marry it to the pole. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. And to everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.